I lost four and a half thousand dollars on Amazon FBA again. Don't make this mistake. So if you're looking to start selling on Amazon FBA, maybe you're in the product research stage right now, maybe you already have a product on its way into Amazon, or maybe you're like me and you already have products selling on Amazon. Whatever the case may be, you have seen enough of those 10 or 20 or even 30 or $40,000 per month products out there to know that there is a lot of money to be made on Amazon. So it's true, there is an opportunity there, there definitely is, but there's also money to be lost on Amazon as well if you're not careful. So I'm gonna share a story of something that happened to me and one of my products literally last week. And I hope that by watching through to the end of this video, you will make the same mistake that I did to lose four and a half thousand dollars on Amazon. So this is about one product and it's actually one of my very first products that I've been selling successfully now for two and a half years. And in that period of time, it's made me quite a lot of money. The reason why I chose it when I went into it and I was looking at all these different niches was basically I found this niche where I saw that there was a size gap in the market. So I wanted to get in with a product that was basically just bigger than everyone else's product. So making the biggest product on the market worked in terms of ranking and getting profitable sales because it was a good differentiation um, and that's why it's been selling successfully. But making this big product came with two problems. Now, the first one was that it was hard and slow to manufacture. So generally you're expecting, you know, around about a 30 day manufacturing time. This product on average takes about 40 days to manufacture. And the other thing is that it's hard to find good quality suppliers to do that. The second problem is what happens when it comes to shipping. So there are two main shipping methods and I'm gonna explain them a little bit just to give you more context. The first shipping method is sea freight. And this is kind of as it sounds, it's basically the goods will go from your supplier um, into, onto a truck, onto the nearest Chinese seaport, and then from there they get loaded onto a container ship uh, in a container, and they go in that container ship to the US where they get unloaded at the US port, and then they go on a truck either to another warehouse or sometimes direct into Amazon's warehouse. So that always takes place in containers, and it's actually a very complicated, convoluted process with customs on either side, and generally the only way that you can do this is with a freight forwarder um, or a customs broker. You might hear different freight terms being talked about being the most common of which are EXW, which stands for X works or FOB, which stands for free on board. And the only difference between those two is basically where the responsibility starts and ends for the goods as they're being carried. EXW just means that the supplier is responsible for dropping them at their door at the supplier's factory. And FOB means the supplier is responsible for them up until the point at which they get loaded onto the sea ship. So this sounds complicated and it is, and that's why you need a freight forwarder to help you through the process. They will basically fill out all the paperwork, explain the process to you and make sure that everything gets done correctly because when it doesn't, there are some expensive mistakes that can happen. That was sea freight. And the second method is Air Express. Now Air Express is kind of, as the name suggests, it goes on a plane. Uh, in this case with Air Express, normally it's gonna be the courier companies that will take your goods for you. and so. The biggest three are DHL, FedEx, and UPS. And unlike Sea Freight, where it's a really complicated process and you need a freight forwarder, with Air Express, you basically just put your hands up and say, here, take the goods from that address to this address, pay the duties, uh, and do everything for me, and I don't wanna worry about it. And the most common shipping term for this process is door-to-door -door DDP, or delivered duties paid. There's also a third method called Air Freight or Air Cargo, which I don't normally use. It's kind of a mixture of the two, where it does go on a plane, but you actually have all of the complexity of the customs brokerage and everything, just like in sea freight. And so you still need a freight forwarder to help you through this process, even though it's going on that plane. So those are the three methods, but the main two are sea freight and Air Express. And by the way, Air Express is super quick. It takes around about a week or sometimes less for your goods to arrive in Amazon, whereas sea freight can take a month or more from China to the US. So that's really slow versus really fast. Uh, Air Express is also really convenient versus sea freight, which is not very convenient. And so obviously, if possible, you wanna go with Air Express. But in this case, with my oversized bulky product, I needed to ship it by Sea Freight economically to be able to make a profit on it. But here's the problem. With Sea Freight, because it takes so long, plus that long manufacturing time of 40 days, plus the month for Sea Freight, month or five or six weeks sometimes, it's really hard to predict the sales and therefore your order size to know how much to actually send and how often to send those goods. What happens is on Amazon side, sales can fluctuate quite a lot. So sometimes you can actually see that you're going to run out of stock and simply not be able to order new stock to come in before you run out. And here's the thing, with Amazon, you always wanna stay in stock. Whenever you run out of stock, um, that's just when bad things happen. You'll find that sometimes hijackers will actually come on your inactive listing um, and you won't notice because you're not looking at your listing. Uh, obviously you're losing profit every day that you're out of stock. And then also you start to lose ranking as well, which is a killer because you know you just spent all of that hard work ranking your product up. So you wanna stay in stock as much as possible. Now, in this case, with this product, that wasn't happening. I could see that I was running out of stock 
And so we actually decided to send a small shipment of Air Express of around about 300 units to try and keep the listing going, keep it uh, in stock and, and prevent those bad things from happening. This is pretty much what myself and my team normally do. And in this case, our supplier is good, they are reliable, they are communicative, um, they speak English well, and they're just generally helpful and they understand that it's a two-way street and they wanna help us out so we can both grow our businesses. So we get the Air Express quote through the supplier and that's normally what we do as well because it's, it's simple and they are reliable. Uh, we tell them to send the goods and then we sit back and we basically wait and we start looking at other things. So we've done this lots of times and there's also lots of other stuff going on. So we're then looking at product research. So we're not really paying attention to that shipment and just waiting every day for it to arrive. And the shipment doesn't arrive on time. It actually doesn't arrive in Amazon at all. And we don't realize until about four days after it was due to arrive when we finally go and talk to the supplier and realize we've made a huge mistake. We assumed we were getting one thing, which was an Air Express door-to-door -door DDP shipment with either DHL, FedEx, or UPS. And we actually got something else, which was an air freight shipment sent with a random freight forwarder and broker and sent to the wrong address. So we quickly discovered that firstly, I had to sign a power of attorney for them to actually move the goods at all. Secondly, there were a whole bunch of fees that we hadn't accounted for and I'm gonna read them out. We are up for brokerage of $150 duties at cost, subject to MPF, I don't even know what that is, subject to the additional Trump tariffs, uh, not in this case, subject to the single entry bond of $50, even though we already have continuous bonds with our real freight forwarders, as well as the airline terminal fee of $87, the messenger fee of $35, delivery of $285, the delivery appointment fee of $65, the WLI H-C of $65, and here is the kicker, the airline storage fee of $155.80 per day. Storage had already started by this point, and so we were already at a bill of $900, counting obviously upwards by $155 every day. And the worst part was the address on the paperwork was wrong. So here's a fun fact for you. If you put Amazon as either the consignee or the importer of record, and these are key terms in your shipping documents, but if Amazon's name is on either one of them, the shipment will go nowhere. Amazon will reject it, they won't accept it. And so most airlines and most freight uh, forwarders won't actually send their goods to Amazon in the first place because they all know that Amazon will reject those documents. Now, because we were really slow to realize and then to act on this, and then there was a weekend and a Chinese holiday as well in a way, all of that time we were getting hit with $155 per day in the airline storage fee. And we weren't actually able to get the documents changed in time until the shipment was going to get moved to a separate warehouse, to a customs warehouse. Um, in this warehouse, the fees increased dramatically and ultimately we made the decision to abandon the shipment. So here's a dollar by dollar breakdown of the loss we incurred when we abandoned that shipment. First of all, cost of goods, $786 for the 300 units. Lost profit while stocked out, 2,100. The Air Express fee itself, which we still paid, $967, and the storage fee, $1,600, actually $800 because our supplier is going to pay half of it. The total damage, $4,653. So that's how I lost more than $4,500 on Amazon FBA last week. It really hurts and it feels kind of silly to say this, but it happened, so I'm sharing this with you and I hope that you can avoid making these simple mistakes yourself as well. Um, now, in this case, this was completely our fault. We didn't follow up on it. We didn't get exact details of what we actually wanted from the supplier, and then we just let them go and do it. So the fixes here are simple, but in general, the mentality and the attitude should be when going into Amazon, think like defensive driving. And if you aren't familiar with this term, what this means is if you are driving a car on the road, you as a driver should have a responsibility to basically assume that everyone else on the road is out to get you. If you don't drive in a really safe way and basically protect yourself at all costs, people, whether it's through incompetence or deliberately, will get you. And this is where Murphy's Law comes into play as well, where anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So if you don't want Murphy's Law to catch up with you one day like it did with me last week, then think defensively and don't leave anything to chance. So this was one particular mistake, but the most common mistake that I see sellers making when it comes to suppliers and purchase orders and shipping and logistics is not having a watertight purchase order contract in place. This is by far the most common problem where new sellers will make an order with a supplier and not define every last condition and detail. And in this case, we didn't do this with our uh, freight quote. But if you don't have a good purchase order contract in place, it's really often that you'll get something that is different to what you expected, you'll have problems with the final quality, or you'll disagree down the line with your supplier on something and you'll find out the hard way as well. So that is one area where I have paid really close attention. So if you wanna know more about how to make a good purchase order contract, leave me a comment down below telling me so, and if enough people say so, I'll make a future video about it.
So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave the video a thumbs up if you did get value out of this story. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this coming out on a weekly basis. And here's a video that you will wanna watch if you enjoyed this one as well. Check this video out. This is how I lost $14,000. That is another mistake that I had to learn the hard way. So check that video out if you wanna learn what I did wrong and what I did to bounce back and recover and get to where I am today.